Hello, hello, dear viewers. A very warm welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In this video, we are going to have a look at how to inspect rectifier diodes in an alternator. You know, when the alternator is producing voltage, these are the three, the three coils that are generating voltage in an alternator. Let's call them U, V, and W. The alternator actually generates a three-phase alternating current. Now, that alternating current will be distributed to the electrical circuits as positive and negative. So in order to transfer the three phase into a DC, it has to be rectified. That rectification is done by the rectifier diodes. As you can see, this is a typical alternator circuit with six rectifier diodes indicated here. The alternator coil, it is connected to set of diodes. For example, U1 is connected to this diode and this diode. This will be the negative diode and this will be the positive diode. So there are two sets of diodes for every coil. As you can see right here, V1 is connected to these two diodes, this diode and this diode. They are there to rectify the AC that is being produced in V1. And W1 also has two set of diodes, one negative diode and one positive diode in order to rectify the already generated AC voltage and then convert it to DC voltage so that we can have a battery positive and battery negative output. On some alternators where there is a three diodes that are used to fit the field coil of the alternator. This is optional. On some alternators we have a field coils that are powering the field circuit but irrespective of the construction these six diodes are mandatory. The three six diodes these are the rectifier diodes. In this video we are going to have a look at how to inspect operation of the rectifier diodes. Before going into that, let's see the behavior of a diode. Diodes, as you can see, as is presented on the schematic diagram of the diode, it is a one-way switch. When electricity is passed from the positive side into the negative side, it allows current flow. But when current comes in the opposite direction, it blocks. So that is the duty of a diode. They transfer current only in one direction, and they block if current comes in the opposite direction. So in this set of rectifier diodes, current is flowing always from the negative diodes to the positive diode. So it comes out this way, then it gets in through the negative diode. So whatever AC that is generated in here, it will go out this way, and then it will enter to the coil this way. So this is why we need diodes. They allow current to pass through in only one direction, and prevent current coming in the opposite direction. By doing so, we finally have a DC output. So that is the duty of the rectifier diodes. So a diode is, as we have said, it is a one-way switch. For example, this particular diode, it will pass through current when it comes from this direction in this direction. If it comes from the positive, it will pass it into the other circuit. But if current is going to flow from the opposite direction, it will block. In order to inspect operation of a diode, put your multimeter on the diode mark. Right here you see there is a diode mark. So put the selector knob of your multimeter on the diode knob and you will see a diode signal right here on the screen. See, there is a diode indicating on the screen. This shows that now the multimeter is adjusted to measure diode. Normally acting diode will conduct in one direction and prevent current flow in the opposite direction. Let's have a look at, for example, this diode. Right here, you, have, you can see there is a diode that is soldered. We take one end of the multimeter probe to one terminal, and the other terminal to the other end. Now, as you can see, there is no conducting. It is indicating no conduction. Then, reverse the polarity of the, diode, the multimeter leads. If the diode is functioning properly, it should conduct in one direction and it should not conduct in the other direction. Now let's reverse the terminals and see conduction of the diode. See? Now it is conducting. If the multimeter reading reads somewhere like this, somewhere like this number, it indicates that the diode is functional. When you reverse the polarity, however, it should not be conducting. When polarity is reversed, as you can see, when polarity is reversed, it is not conducting. See the reading on the multimeter? But when the positive lead of the, the multimeter touches the positive lead of the diode 
and the negative lead of the multimeter attacks the negative lead of the diode, it should be conductive. So that is how a normally functioning diode should behave. Let's go ahead and measure this diode. Look, the positive lead of the multimeter connected to the positive lead of the diode, the negative lead of the multimeter connected to the negative lead. As you can see, there is no reading. Let's reverse the polarity. Polarity is reversed, so now also there is no reading. This indicates that this diode has an open circuit. So this diode is not functional. Let's, let's go ahead and measure this with the positive lead of the multimeter touching the positive end of the diode. Now this is reading zero. If a diode reads zero volt when done on diode continuity, it indicates that the diode has shorted. No matter which way you measure it, it will read the same. See, it is reading zero again. So this indicates this diode is shorted. Now this is the behavior of a shorted circuit diode. If a diode is shorted, it will read continuity in every direction. If a diode is open, it will read direction. It will not read continuity in any of the direction. If the diode is normal, however, it will read continuity in one side. It will not read continuity in the other side. So this is how you inspect diodes. Now rectifier diodes, they come in different shape and style. It can come in this kind of shape where the other half is removed from this side. They can sometimes appear in this pattern. See, where the leads of the diodes are extruding from this side. They also come in this shape. Right here we have the diodes arranged, six diodes. We have two, 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 six diodes arranged. And also they come in this style where we have three set of diodes on the upper heatsink and three set of diodes on the lower heat sink. Now, the procedure of inspection is simply the same. If you want to test, for example, these three diodes, if they are operational or not, just do the same test. Put one lead of your multimeter on the heat sink and connect it to the diodes. See, there is a reading of 454 volt diode number two. It's also reading diode number three. is also reading. Then when you flip the multimeter leads, it should not be reading. No reading, no reading, no reading. This indicates that these three diodes are functional. Because they have given continuity in one direction, they have not given continuity in another direction, that indicates that these diodes are functional. Now there is a method of identifying if they are a positive diode or a negative diode. As you can see, those diodes that are connected to the battery plus are called the positive diodes. Those diodes which are connected to the negative heat sink, the negative heat sink are called the negative diodes. So if I place a multimeter end, if I place a positive multimeter end on the heat sink and I get continuity, that indicates that those are the negative diodes. If I place the negative end on the heat sink and get continuity, that indicates those are a positive diode. For example, let's place the positive on the heat sink, right here on the heat sink, and then measure continuity. There is no continuity. There is no continuity. There is no continuity. Let's flip it. Place the negative lead on the heat sink and then the positive lead on the diodes. Continuity, continuity, continuity. See, I have found continuity by placing the negative lead on the heat sink, which indicates that this set of diodes are the positive diodes. Because when placing a multimeter negative lead here and then touching with the positive multimeter right here, I can get continuity. If I flip it, there is no continuity. Same thing is true here. For the negative diodes, it will have a continuity only if you touch the positive end of the multimeter to the heatsink and then the other to the other end of the diode. So this indicates that these diodes, these three diodes are positive diodes. As you can see, there is a battery terminal to be taken out of this heatsink. So these three positive diodes are functioning properly. So this is how you can inspect a diode. Let's go ahead and inspect these diodes also. As you can see, there are the diode tips that is extruding from the assembly here. Those are the diode legs. And the other end is right here on the top. Now you can individually measure the diodes by simply placing one multimeter lead on the diode here and putting the other on the leg here. Let's do that again. 
one multimeter on the heat sink tip, the other on the leg is reading. This one is also reading. This one is also reading. Let's flip the multimeter, put one end on the heat sink and the other on the legs of the respective diode. No continuity, no continuity, no continuity. This indicates that these three diodes are also functional. So this is a very simple procedure of testing diodes. You can do the same for this. Here we have six diodes located right in there. Their ends are projected like so. And the wires of the alternator wiring are to be soldered right in between. So we have three sets of diodes. We have three sets of diodes on the other side as well. You can measure those by simply connecting. You can individually test them by connecting one lead here and one lead here. For example, if I want to check the, continu the operation of this particular diode, I can bring one multimeter tip right here on the connection of the wire and then put the other right here. Then let's flip. It's not conducting in one direction. Let's flip it here and uh, do this. See, now it is conducting. So this means this doubt, the upper doubt, is functional. Let's go ahead and do the same for the other. This is also functional. This is also functional. Now for the other three sets of diodes that are placed on the lower side, you can do the same by simply placing the multimeter lead right here. Test it. No conduction. No conduction. No conduction. Let's flip the multimeter. Put the red on the middle, on the wire. This is where the alternator windings are to be connected. Now we have reading. This diode is functional. Go ahead. Now we have reading. This is also functional. Go ahead. This is also functional. See? We have measured, we have checked that all the six diodes that are located in here are also functional. So this is a very simple method of inspecting operation of the diode. Let's go ahead and do the same for this Toyota heat sink. Right here we have the heads of the diodes and right here we have the legs of the diodes. The legs of the diodes is connected to every wire. This is where the leads coming from the alternator coil are to be connected. We have one, we have two, and we have three. So by simply measuring, by placing this is where the lead is connected. It is point here. If you look at on the paper, it is right here on this point. By measuring from here to here, measuring from here to here, measuring from here to here, you can check the positive diodes. By measuring from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here, you can measure the negative diodes as well. For example, there are two diodes here. Two diodes are here. Let's go ahead and measure those two diodes. They belong to this wire. This is a line coming from the alternator. If you flip it, this is a line coming from the alternator. As you can see, those two diodes are there, one positive, one negative diode. Let's go ahead and place this multimeter terminal on here. And then check for continuity right here. There is no continuity. So this diode, let's flip it. Put the same place. See, now there is continuity. It means this diode is functional. For the other also, you can do the same. For all the three wires, for all the wirings that are connected, see, this diode is also functional. Let's go ahead and do the same for this. This wire, this winding, this uh, diode is also functional, see. You have to scratch it a little so that you can have a conduction. Paint has to be removed so that the multimeter leads can contact the heat sink. Similarly, you can do the same for the other heat sink as well. Let's do it like so. No continuity. Let's flip the multimeter. Now there is continuity. Now there is continuity. Let's do the same for this as well. You have to find a, a spot for conduction has to be there. Okay, we'll sand it a little and uh, check it again. What about for this? Oh, this is basically because there is paint underneath, multimeter couldn't go through. See, you can scratch it like this so that you can expose the head of the diode. You can scratch it. Or because they are all connected to a similar heat sink, you can put one in here. 
one end of the multimeter can be placed on the heat sink because it is a common heat sink then measure no continuity for this diode on this direction no continuity for this diode in this direction flip the multimeter and then place it here on the heat sink measure now we have continuity so this diode is functional measure also this this diode is functional as you can see this is a positive terminal which is going to be taken out of the heat sink to the battery this is a positive output so the heat sink that is connected to the positive will be the positive heat sink and the upper heat sink because it is connected to the battery ground right here this is the negative heat sink you can directly measure continuity between the positive and the negative to roughly check status of the diode place one multimeter in on the positive and do it on the heat sink there is no continuity in one direction but when we flip it it should give continuity but now because we are measuring directly from battery positive to the negative heat sink it should read a voltage value of two diodes which is around 800 something now we have checked it this way there is no continuity let's flip the multimeter and measure it this way place it here the positive end of the multimeter on the negative and see 800 something this is how you can roughly check operation of the diode if any of the diodes is shorted then you wouldn't get this kind of reading this indicates that all the diodes are correct and they are all functional so dear viewers that is how you can check operation of a rectifier diode in your alternator well dear viewers that is all we have for you regarding how to inspect operation of a rectifier diodes if you find this video helpful please smash the like button if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe turn on notifications so that you will be the first to get notified whenever we come up with another video until then stay safe